Creation stories, a few closing thoughts on Genesis chapter 1 through to Genesis chapter 3, two different creation stories. Chapter 5, 30 chapters exploring hope in the year 2019. I'm Kevin Devere, Minister of Word and Sacrament of Bells Hill Central Parish Church, and thank you for joining us on this journey. We need hope renewed. And we've begun with creation stories. Two different stories, one bold and declaratory, the other a sense of partnership and commitment of joining together and journeying with the God who meets with us in the garden, the beauty and chaos of our lived experience and there enters into a conversation that leads in the direction of cooperation. And yes, let's be honest, competition. And so this unfolding beginning is just an invitation to, to speak of these stories as so-called scientific or even pre-scientific history and narrative is to rob them of their power. They are stories of meaning, of invitation, of questions, and they are stories just as powerful now as they were when they were first told and when they were first written. How majestic are these words? Genesis chapter 2, the first three verses. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Rest. Resting in God, a sense in which we come home. We find our hope has renewed bearings because we suddenly recognize that we are part of of a wider gift of creation. We find ourselves, yes, dust and yes, glory. We find ourselves weak and also stronger together. We find ourselves uh, in broken relationship and yet also possibly renewed relationship with God. We find ourselves strident and we also find ourselves on our knees. And it's an amazing sense of finding our compass renewed. And so I do invite you to read these stories and reflect. I'm not exhausting them. I'm only offering you an introduction. I believe that biblical hope starts here with a big story. And actually, there are two big stories of creation in Genesis chapter 1 through to Genesis 3. Try and read those chapters. Allow them to shape and form your own imagination. Where are you? Who are you? How are you responding to these stories? How are you listening for the possibilities of hope renewed? So on the Feast of Epiphany, when I introduced this year of hope, I mentioned a compass. North, looking to the God who renews us. South, looking within ourselves in responding to the questions. Who am I? What am I doing here? What's my life for? What contribution am I making? East, outside of Eden, eventually going out into the world where we have to fashion and live out hope. It's We've got no option. We're not in paradise anymore. We're not in a luscious glorious garden we're out there so-called with the ticks and fleas working it out with the things that bring us great joy and bring us to our knees with the profound moments of beauty and the profound moments of sadness and then yes west trying to come back to a deeper appreciation of how we are connected to each other to god within ourselves with a wider gift that is creation hope it begins here. Creation stories. Wonderful reminders. We belong. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, glorious in your power, majestic in your deeds, we thank you that we belong. Even as you speak, so you include and invite us to offer our response. We are pilgrims, people along the way. We have not found all the answers, but as life unfolds from one chapter to another, from one season to the next, we thank you for the invitation to be part of something larger than ourselves. Renew our hope this year, even as we journey. For these things we ask in Jesus' strong name. Amen.